Hey y'all, it's a girl, and this is me, my Mimi, got another video. So if you watched my cancer video, the video that just posted, you'll know I'm really frustrated with how my energy oracle readings, tarot readings, have gone today. So I decided to take, where's the camera? Here. Yeah. So I decided to take a break, and I'm going to do like a reaction video to, um, if you check out the channel, MJV Animations, they're pretty awesome. And it's two terrifying Popeyes horror stories animated, because I love animation. And I just feel like it'll help me get over the day with the cancellating mishap that I had. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's just go down. Back in the summer of 2019, Popeyes launched a new chicken sandwich that immediately became their best-selling item on the menu. The sandwich- Right before COVID. I feel like that sandwich in COVID is related. It was so popular, in fact, that it started selling out quickly, leading to shortages, fistfights, even a few murders. Yeah. People went absolutely insane for the chicken. And even with all the profits we saw, I started praying that Popeyes would never reach the same kind of popularity again. I've managed my local Popeyes for seven years, and watching two middle-aged women beat each other with chairs, trying to get the last sandwich we had in stock, is by far the lowest point in my professional career. At least, it was the lowest so far. And likely to lose its spot since there was a rumor a new special sandwich was coming out in the fall. Due to my seniority and track record, Popeye's corporate sometimes includes me and a few other managers in on focus groups. It was my turn to host, so six of us, five local managers and the representative from corporate, all met at my franchise at four in the morning. I used my key to let us in, but hurried everyone through the kitchen without turning on the dining room lights. Once the six of us were seated mm -hmm. around a huge prep table in the back, the guy placed a metal case down in front of him. He was a small man, sketchy. balding, dressed in a white like sketchy as crap. shirt and tie. My name is Peter, the guy from Corporate Taurus. Obviously, that's not my real name, but that's what you're going to call me moving forward. I cannot stress this. Why is Popeye so sketchy? <laughs> Why can't they know his real name? What the hell? Enough. But everything you see, hear, and taste today is top secret and under the intellectual property protection of Popeye's Incorporated. Peter followed up on his statement by passing out non disclosure agreements that we each had to sign. Once those. Do y'all think this is true? Because I know it's just like the animation, but is it based off of a true story? Because I know we have Popeye sandwiches. Like, what if this is true, guys? And we're getting like the DL. This were finalized. He opened the metal case and extracted a laptop, then instructed us to gather around on the other side of the table so that we could see the screen. I want to show you all some test footage so you have it. Okay, was that my computer? Did they, their faces look really creepy? The idea of the effect that the product is having, Peter said. Before we start, I jumped in. Can you tell us more about what the product actually is? Peter shook his head. Watch the video first, then questions. This is how much no. the average person is making right now on ClickBank. And you can see, see it's zero dollars. I've never done it like this before. We all leaned in to see the screen. It was security footage of a small room. We all need to see the screen. Facts. Or so people were seated around a table. Each person had a plate in front of them with food and a drink bearing the familiar Popeye's logo. They appeared to be mid-meal. I was about to ask Peter what was the point of spying on people eating when a man began to twitch on screen. A woman soon joined him, falling out of her chair while another began laughing hysterically. The scene quickly devolved into chaos, with people fighting, jumping on the table, and then the video was cut short when a woman swung a chair high, hitting the security camera in the process. 
What in the world was that? Asked Frank, one of the other managers. That was a test of the first batch of the product, Peter replied, putting away the laptop. Thankfully, now that we are at batch number seven, we think we've ironed out any issues. Mm -mm. We'd like for you five, some of our most reliable managers, to get a preview of the product before we begin general rollout next year. Peter opened the metal container and withdrew five smaller objects. They looked like futuristic Tupperware. I slid one to each of us and gestured for us to open the boxes. Inside of mine was a very fresh looking still hot cheeseburger. I glanced around and saw that all five managers received identical burgers. Is this beef? Another manager, Bobby, asked. Legally, we can't call it that, Peter said. I poked the burger. Literally, you can call it that? No, is it beef or is it not beef? It's like, it has to be one or the other. The crap? I mean, is it from a cow? Right. It's lab grown. So vegan, Frank asked. Legally, we can't call it that, Peter repeated. Please give it a try. We are excited to add cheeseburgers to the Popeye's menu. Mm. We think that this is going to be even bigger of a rollout than with the chicken sandwich in 2019. I picked up the burger but hesitated. I kept thinking of the scene we'd watched on the laptop. Peter was looking at me like he could read my mind. Absolutely nothing to worry about, he said. I just showed you all of that for transparency and to highlight how far we've come with the product. Yeah. I guarantee this is going to be the best burger you've ever eaten. I took a bite. He was right. The flavor was unreal. A crashing wave of savory and salty and smoky notes that swept me up and dragged me away deep into happiness. I took another bite, reveling in the crunch of the pickle and the onion and the heat from the unusual but perfect sauce and the meat. I can't describe it. The taste, the texture, they were all the best I'd ever experienced. I went to take another bite and realized that I'd finished the burger. I looked around feeling really half in a daze. All the other managers were finished as well and staring at each other with the same slack-jawed look that I felt on my own face. Peter curiously reached into his pocket and took out a stopwatch. He activated it with a click and sat on the end of the table next to the big metal case. Nothing happened for several seconds. Then Frank spoke. More, he said, reaching towards his neighbor's plate. Is there more here? You have to give us more. The owner of the plate, a woman named Catherine, slapped Frank's hand away and pulled the dish up to her face so she could lick the few flecks of remaining sauce. We all followed her cue and did the same. I was hit with that rush of flavor again, but only for an instant. Then all the crumbs and drips and bits were gone, and I felt like I was starving. Give me another. I heard myself tell Peter. There's some sauce left on your hand, Frank said, grabbing my arm, his eyes wide and bloodshot. I tried to get my hand back, but he sank his teeth into my palm before I could. I yelled and punched Frank in the jaw, knocking him on the floor. We need more, someone yelled. It might have been me. Somebody was it's trying to take the crumbs that had fallen off my shirt. It's just a someone in a choke hold and I think I was screaming, crying, or laughing. The last thing I remember seeing before blacking out was Peter taking a gas mask out of the metal container, then hitting a hidden button. Hazy gas filled the room, and I felt my vision blur, then go dark. When I woke up, we were all seated around the table again. Peter was going around with a first aid kit and a glass of water. Is everyone awake? He asked. Good. First thing, you're all okay. Craving for the product can be powerful, a bit, but it is fleeting. You should avoid red meat in the future, though. Reminding your taste buds of the product could cause a flare-up. 
they can never have a burger again or a steak. That sucks. What did you do to us? Frank asks, rubbing his bruised jaw. I thought you said the product was ready. It is, and it isn't. I told you it would be the best burger you ever had, and I don't think anyone here would disagree. The main issue is that we need the craving to be less intense, but long-lasting. I had high hopes that this batch would nail that, but I'm afraid it's back to the drawing lab. I looked down at the bite marks on my hand. Okay, that's freaking crazy. For time though, I'm going to move it along. Oh my god, okay. Sorry guys. Afraid that it's going to be the best burger you've ever tasted. Ah! The student council this meeting is, is really giving me headaches, uh. Basically, what I skipped over is like you had to sign like a non disclosure agreement or, you know, pretty much like threaten him not to say anything about it. So that pretty much looks like you're reporting us. So let's do story two. You know how you can sometimes tell somebody is going to be trouble just by the way that they are standing in line at a Popeye's restaurant? I picked up on that vibe from not just. This thing, I don't really eat that many pop that much Popeyes, I guess I should in the future, but I really don't. So I guess I don't know what that looks like. One person, but a couple, from the moment I noticed them waiting to get served. The guy was a big... Oh, that's profound. That's not okay. Biker type. All tattoos and leather, with a long beard and lumps of muscle everywhere. I immediately started thinking of him as Popeye in my mind because of his massive forearms. The man looked dangerous and deeply, deeply irritated. But the lady standing next to him, despite barely being five foot tall, made me much more nervous. She was on her phone while in line, practically screaming at somebody at the other end. Her dress was shocking red, a burst sherry, and her hair was a shocking red. Brittle tangle of bleach blonde curls. Likely a wig. Since her man was Popeye, I mentally labeled her Olive. I eyed the couple nervously from behind the cast register as the line advanced. This was only my second month working at Popeye's, and already I felt completely burnt out. Between rude customers, chaotic shift changes, and chronic understaffing, I dreaded coming into work each day. Popeye and Olive grew increasingly restless while waiting to be at the counter. Part of me sympathized with them since the restaurant was short. Staffed. The lunch and the dinner rush were usually a nightmare. I remember that afternoon was particularly slow due to two cashiers calling out sick. By the time the couple got close, Popeye was openly glaring at me and Olive was walking back and forth from her place in line to the counter. She finally hung up her phone, and I overheard her say in a fake whisper to the guy, They should replace all these cashiers with self-checkout. Kids are so lazy and slow these days. I didn't take it personally, but I was moving as fast as I could to process orders. Still, I avoided eye contact with Popeye and Olive until there was only one person in line ahead of them. It was a skinny kid in a hoodie, probably a student from the local college, judging by his backpack. He looked young enough. Real quick though, did this become like a mini mukbang now? Oh. Though that he might have even been a high schooler. I appreciated that the guy was waiting patiently for his turn. So I was taken aback when Olive walked right up to the counter, cut in front of him, and tried placing her order. Give me a number four and a twelve, she barked. And I think we should get a discount since we were waiting here half an hour. The kid cleared his throat. Um, excuse me, I'm actually next in line. There are two lines, Olive snapped. The skinny guy looked at me for support. I didn't want to get involved, but I'm also not a fan of bullies. 
There's only one line, I explained. Well, we were here first, regardless, Olive told me. You saw us coming first, didn't you? Both Olive and the kid in the hoodie were looking at me. All I could do was hold up my hands and shrug. I really didn't know who came in first, though the young guy was clearly ahead of the couple in line. Look, I've been waiting just as long as you have, the kid said. And I'm going to place my order. You can go as soon as I'm done. Olive stared at him for a moment before whirling around and stomping back to her place in line. I smiled at the skinny guy, impressed that he stood up for himself. He gave me a nod back and opened his mouth to place his order. Before he could, I caught the tail end of whatever Olive was whispering to Popeye. Something similar to, are you going to let him talk to me like that? Apparently, Popeye was not, because he stepped forward and sucker punched the kid in the back of the head. The skinny guy collapsed, banging his forehead into the counter as he fell. Mm -hmm. I stared at the scene, struggling to keep up. I'd never seen an outburst of violence just come out of the blue like that. No warning, no wind-up, just Popeye throwing a haymaker from behind at a man half his size. Unfortunately, that was only the start of the brawl. While the kid in the hoodie was down on the floor, Olive started raining kicks on him, black boots flashing up and down like a swarm of wasps. One of her heels snapped, and Olive screamed in rage like it was the unconscious man's fault for her shoe-breaking. She cr- she has mental issues. Grabbed a nearby plastic tray and began wailing on the kid with it. She was absolutely berserk. I snapped out of my shot while she was swinging the tray. Stop! Mm-hmm. I'm calling the police! Olive snarled at me and then threw the tray like a frisbee. It smacked into my temple, leaving a small cut, but not doing much damage. She looked like she was about to scramble over the counter to come after me. But Popeye wrapped a huge arm around her and half carried, half dragged the woman out of the store. I left the counter to check on the knocked out kid while my manager called the police. The guy's face was basically one big bruise patched in several shades of purple and red. His nose was clearly broken, a starburst of blood running from above his lips and below his chin. The scariest injury, however, was the swollen knot on the back of the kid's head. Popeye had caught him full on with the sucker punch, and my immediate fear was that there could be bleeding in the brain. The police in the end- I'm not laughing at what happened. For some reason, the word sucker punch just sounded funny to me. <laughs> just want to put that out there. We went to ride at the same time, maybe five or six minutes after Popeye and Olive fled the scene. The kid in the hoodie was still knocked out and bleeding, but at least he was breathing. I saw the two paramedics exchange a concerned look as they loaded the guy up on a gurney, wrapping a neck brace around his throat before sliding him into the ambulance. Police officers buzzed around the restaurant, taking statements from staff and any customers who saw the incident. I was providing a description of Papa and Olive, trying not to look at the streak of blood running from the counter to the floor when a familiar face walked into the restaurant. I blinked and stopped talking mid-sentence. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Olive. She'd removed the blonde wig, revealing choppy dark hair, and she'd put on sunglasses, but it was unmistakably the same woman. Is this the line to order? She snapped. I'm in a hurry. That's her, I told the officer, pointing. She's the one who started the brawl. Olive's eyes went wide. She was clearly stunned that her horrible disguise hadn't fooled anybody. She took off, sprinting through the door with the three officers at her heels. I rushed to the... She really came back to her? That's... she's dumb. ...window to watch. Popeye was sitting on the parking lot on a motorcycle. So dumb, she deserves to be locked up. A cop tackled Olive into the asphalt before she could make it to her escape. I expected Popeye to jump off his bike to help her, but instead, he tried to peel out. A police cruiser blocked him before he could get out of the parking lot, and had several police officers working together to pull the big man off his motorcycle. Both he and Olive resisted arrest, until the tasers came out. Then the pair were howling in pain. 
I have to admit, it felt satisfying to see the couple get a taste of their own medicine. But my smile was bleeding, wiped away as soon as I remembered how the kid looked as they were loading him into the ambulance. Broken, bruised, and bloody. All he wanted to do was order lunch and stick up for his place in line. I took out my phone to record the police tasing Popeye and Olive. I promised myself I'd check up on the kid at the hospital after work, and if he was awake, I'd show him the video. That was pretty cool. I have to say, it wasn't that scary. It was more, I guess, like shocking maybe. Because you wouldn't say that to happen. But in four as horror, hmm, it was okay. The animations were amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna end this here. I think I have a birthday.